Welcome back, everyone. My last guest this evening, I'm welcoming Christina Bevilacqua from the Providence Public Library. Christina, thank you so much for thank coming. You. And Yotande from the Southside Cultural Center. Hello. Thank you both for joining us today. Uh, we're here to talk about an exciting event on December 6th. Correct. Correct. Yes, so that is two Tuesdays from now, or is it this, this Next Thursday. Next Thursday, okay. <laughs> That's right. right. time anymore. I can't, believe we're, I can't believe we're in December. Right now. <laughs> no. Just in denial. That's crazy. So before we get into this event, it's really exciting, and it's, you know, two women from Rhode Island suffrage are involved in it, which is really great. Um, give us a little overview of your backgrounds, one at a time. You know, don't talk over each other. <laughs> you want to go first? I'll go first. So um, I'm still new. I'm, I'm still a new roadie. I'm here ah. for, since uh, uh, 2016. I'm the program director at Southside Cultural Center. I'm also a choreographer and a dancer. And um, I'm originally from Chicago, the Windy City, and came here from New York. Um, yeah, that's, that's, okay. that's my thing. Okay, great. <laughs> and uh, Christina, what's, so what's going on over at the library? <laughs> I am the Programs and Exhibitions Director at Providence Public Library. I've been at my job for exactly a year. Um, I'm very excited to be there. We have an enormous um, building construction project going on, a giant renovation mm. of the 1950s section of our building. The, 18, or the 1900 building is beautifully preserved, and we have a little temporary library in there so people can still come and get in at the Washington Street side of the library. But um, we'll reopen again in um, 2019 or 2020 with a fabulous, new, wonderful, modern space. Great, and I saw the construction today. It's really, they're really <laughs> coming along. Yes. That moves fast. Yes. So what, what's kind of prompted is just sort of modernizing and bringing the library up to kind of the 21st century or whatever. That's exactly. And I think one of the things we know we need, um, we serve an enormous variety of people. Um, our constituencies are all ages and come from all parts of the city and are doing all different things. And our current space is just not nimble and flexible. And so we will have a much more flexible set of spaces that we can do different things in and we'll have uh, spaces set aside for teens um, and for kids and for all different kinds of activities. Okay. And let's talk about the Southside Culture Center briefly. Yes. For those who might not know what that is, give mm -hmm. us an idea of what you guys do and some of the programs that okay. you offer. Great. So um, we are located on Broad Street. Um, I'm still, as I say, still new, so I still talk in cross streets, Broad Street <laughs> and Bridgham. <laughs> um, and so our mission is very simple to engage, cultivate, and um, the, the community through the arts and to really be a cultural hub on the south side of um, Providence. We are at that uh, apex, which is sort of the meeting point of three neighborhoods, uh, West End, uh, Elmwood, and Upper and Lower South Side. So um, that we're really there to serve uh, that community, to be available for that community and the other uh, communities of Providence. Um, our programming ranges from class dance classes, uh, uh, music and uh, drum classes, African um, uh, drum classes, particularly with Sidi Maiga and Maestro um, Jesus Anduyar. Uh, we are the home of six resident partners, Ryla Ribs, Laotian Community Center, Jordan Wellness and Adventure Center, PIG, um, Providence Improv Guild. And uh, so we really want to be a space, we really work to be a space for the community, um, that people can feel that we are part of their lives and they can come and engage in the programming and um, all the activities of the center. Thank you for that. Okay, mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so Unladylike 2020 is a national documentary. So it's a national movement, really. And how, how did Rhode Island get involved in that? And how did the center and the library kind of mm -hmm. come together in involvement in this project? So Unladylike 2020 is um, the, the um, founder and original creator of the idea, Charlotte Mangin, um, is an award winning filmmaker centered in New York. And um, she and her production team have um, canvassed the progressive era of the 20th, or 19th and 20th century, so maybe 1890 to 1920, that period of great technological change and, excuse me, cultural change. And a lot of um, women were breaking ground at that time. And so they looked for 31 women, um, and 31 is because one for each day of Women's History Month yep. um, in March, and this will take place in 2020. Um, the, the programs will all yep. be broadcast um, and made available 
um, in March of 2020 um, in honor of the 100th anniversary of women getting the vote. So the idea was to find women all over the country who had were known at their, in their time and were very accomplished, but are almost all forgotten now. Yeah. And um, so the way that they have gone about doing the research is to apply for research grants from the State Humanities Councils. And we're one of nine State Humanities Councils in Rhode Island um, who has uh, given the project a research grant. And so as part of the research, there will be a public program. And um, that's how uh, Yotande and I got involved. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. And yeah, so let's talk about the honorees. Uh, two are from Rhode Island, not yes. really honorees, but you know, celebrated women that yes. have a part in the documentary. Um, Ciceretta Jones, mm -hmm. who is a singer, a uh, soprano, singer. Yes, yes, which was you know, ahead of her time as an African-American woman. Exactly. And so she was part of that. And then Annie Smith Peck, who is like a mountaineer, kind yes. of. <laughs> yes. We don't really have any mountains here, but I don't know what she was <laughs> She mountaineered. <laughs> well, she, she actually um, also became um, a scholar of Greek and an archaeologist. She spoke at least four languages. And wow. she climbed mountains all over the world, including climbing a peak in Peru when she was 65. And she was still climbing mountains in New Hampshire at 82. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we can only yeah, okay. That's awesome. yeah, you know. and, of course, <laughs> and of course, Sister Rudder Jones yes. climbed all kinds of racial yes. mountains yes. <laughs> yes. as the first black, she, you know, yes. soprano, you know, wow. Yes. Yes, she, and yeah. also all over the world, mm -hmm. we performed yeah. in, um, I can't remember how many continents, but um, and I want to just mention that um, when the um, organizers in New York called us in Rhode Island and said we have these two unknown women, Ciceretta Jones is not unknown to those of us in Providence mm. because um, Rob Dimmick and Ray Rickman, who have founded Stages of Freedom, have been doing really amazing work for several years in excavating Ciceretta Jones's life in yeah. this city um, and state. So. Um, we're really happy to get to um, have them on the panel next right. week. Yes, Ray is very excited. He's yes. A, he's a weekly contributor yeah. here. Oh, yes. yes. That's yes. Right. And t talking about it a lot. Yes. So. Right. Let's talk a little bit about why this is relevant right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in a time when 6% of Fortune 100 CEOs are women. Only 6%. And, you know, we don't have a lot of women political leaders. There's not a lot of representation. So is this coming at a good time? Is that what, what prompted this? Why is this like relevant to society where we are now? Well, I, I mean, I don't know from the perspective of the um, creators of the whole project, but I will say that what was interesting this week as I was promoting the event to people that I know and I was sending it out, how many times I was sending to women and saying, you know, you're a groundbreaking woman and, you know, the first this, the first that. And I kept thinking, God, like, you know, these women mm. were born in the 19th century right. and they were groundbreaking, but we're still needing, you know, there are still women that I know that are the first at this or the first at that. So, yeah, um, yeah I think we have a ways to go. Yeah, yeah and I think that um, politically, I think that it's, it's always relevant, but particularly relevant now uh, in our climate where I think um, women are being really uh, mistreated. Uh, in, in some ways, and I think that it's relevant and important to also to always remember, you know, those who uh, forge the, you know, forge the way are, are really brave to do these things that were unladylike. So, yes. yeah. unladylike. Mm -hmm. I, love that. I love that. Uncouth, as a lady. <laughs> My father used to say, that, so "Don't be uncouth." Yeah. Sometimes, well, it's, um, what's the phrase? Um, uh, women. Um, Oh, there's something about uh, those women making history. Um, oh, like yeah. Well behaved women well -behaved seldom, seldom make history. history yeah. um, right, that's right. And <laughs> I, do, you know, <laughs> I do think that there are more and more attempts, particularly around reproductive rights and, and voting rights, certainly, mm -hmm. to put um, uh, strictures back in place to make it more difficult for people to get out of the circumstances they may find themselves in, whether women or um, people of color. Um, and these are women who had all kinds, grew up with all kinds of strictures and just looked past them yeah. and, and sped past them. Um, so I think they're, they're, it's a wonderful time to be reminded um, of the bravery it takes, but right. also of the progress that we make. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I think that's a mm -hmm. great point. And so the event on the 6th is going to feature a panel and also a, a pre-screening of one of the parts of the documentary series, correct? Right. Because the full, right. the full series doesn't actually launch until March 1 of 2020, but right. we're going to be seeing a piece of one of the documentaries or the whole thing. 
we're going to see a piece of the trailer and a piece of one, and it's um, Bessie Coleman, who was the first mm -hmm. African American um, aviatrix. She was aviatrix. a pilot. Aviatrix. Um, <laughs> I like that. Pilot. I like that. Um, <laughs> so that'll be exciting. And I should mention also that these are animated. Um, and um, Emily Shaban is the animator, and the um, animations, the, the little bit that I've seen, are just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So I think that really adds to the series as well. And so the event is, uh, you're, you're moderating the event. I'm it's, moderating the panel conversation. The panel, yes. So, and who is on the panel? The panel is Hannah Kimberly, who just published a biography of Annie Smith Peck called A Woman's Place is at the Top, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rob Dimmick and Ray Rickman okay. from Stages of Freedom, and Charlotte Mangin, who again is the um, founder of this project, and I believe that My little cheat sheet here. <laughs> no, I should know this by you now. Just have to, you okay. just have to use them sometimes. Just to, everybody just has to come. That's right, that's, that's right. We're not going to tell yeah, you. you got yeah. everyone. And me you got, and, and you yes. as moderator. Yes. <laughs> and we are thrilled, I just want to say, um, to just back up Yatande's description of Southside Cultural Center. It is a wonderful place for those of us in the community to be able to host. Um, all kinds of different events, and especially as someone who has no program space at my library yeah. for the next year and a half, um, <laughs> I'm delighted. There's really good parking for mm -hmm. those Providence people who don't That's leave right. unless there's good parking. Yes, um, no, not on the street. You can actually right. there's a lot. Yes. That's good. Okay. There's a there's a parking lot. It's wonderful, um, and it's a really comfortable space. Mm -hmm. And we will have refreshments. Um, and Charlotte will be talking about her process. Um, and oh, I know the other person we left off who's on the panel is Morgan Greff, the executive mm -hmm. director of Rhode Island Historical Society. Okay, um, yes. That, who, that's fitting. Yeah. Yes. And so Morgan is not only um, very knowledgeable about Rhode Island history and women in Rhode Island, so I think she can help us look at how these women fit into the context and how they really were outliers in the way that they went about their lives. But also she um, and Ray and Rob can talk about what it's like to look in archives for people who have not necessarily been, yeah. their histories have not been preserved there and how difficult that work is. And so do you know anything about the selection process for the two Rhode Island women that were chosen? or is I it don't. And I don't know who the other women in the series are. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a mystery. I mean, I obviously I knew about Cicero Jones because of Robin Ray's work. But I knew a little bit about Annie Smith Peck. Um, when I worked at the Providence Athenaeum, we had a couple of researchers who were interested in her. Um, but uh, you know, again, um, she is really just, she had this fantastic, amazing career, and very, very few people have heard of her. Yeah, so. Absolutely. And so the event starts at 530. 530. Correct, yep. And it's got the panel, you've got the screening. What do you hope people leave the event feeling? What, what do you hope the impact is on the attendees? Yeah, I think that um, in our conver in my, my conversations with the organizers, I, I, one of the real um, uh, exciting possible outcomes is the community engagement to really get people into this conversation about history, about women's history, and I think that um, with this being a national project, um, that it will sort of add to the cultural landscape of what of the conversations that are already happening, and then will give Providence. Um, Providence community an opportunity to really add their, con make their contribution to the con conversation. Excellent. So I, we're def definitely looking forward to that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I know the public library doesn't really have any events coming up because you well, have no space. Well, we do. Just not in the library. Not in the library, <laughs> but um, another project that um, we work collaboratively with Trinity Rep, our um, neighbors on Empire Street, and um, we uh, have a program called Context and Conversation. There's one that happens with each play of the season. And the next play is Black Odyssey, and we will have that event at Sophia Academy on January 17th. Um, because this is Providence and there are no degrees of separation, Yatande <laughs> is the choreographer That's for right. Black right. uh, Odyssey. <laughs> so we will be, I, we're in constant communication about one project and another. But I'm very excited about that. That will also be a panel um, looking a lot at, um, uh, kind of related to this conversation, um, erasure of histories and what it means to reclaim our, our stories and our histories. Excellent. And so and free and open to the public. So oh good. And so is the uh, yes. ladylike yes. as well. Absolutely. Free with refreshments. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to be sure that we mentioned that um, this was also a result of funding from the Rhode Island Council for the Humanities. Mm -hmm. So. 
And how about anything new and exciting happening at the Cultural Center? Yes, well, to keep on this journey of acknowledging women, women in our lives, we have a wonderful event that's coming up just two days after that event, December 8th. It okay. is a two stages, I'm um, sorry, um, a reading of Rose Weaver, and it's two of her um, readings, two of her new texts and their stage readings. Um, and that's going to happen on that Saturday at 2 p.m. Um, at Southside Cultural Center of Rhode Island. And then on December 16th, um, is that the, December 15th, the <laughs> Saturday the 15th, we have our wonderful annual holiday market and cultural extravaganza. Okay. That is free and open to the public. It is vendors, there are performers, there is food. Come and buy and celebrate the holiday season at SCCRI. But first, come to Rose Weaver's <laughs> show at 2 o'clock on the 8th. Perfect. So that's what we got up our sleeve. Oh, just, the just next a few things. Yeah. <laughs> You're not busy at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you both so much, yes. Christina Yatande, for, for joining me. And um, we hope everybody comes out to yes, check out the event do. on yes. the 6th, 530. Do. Listen to the panel, watch the uh, documentary, little... Blurb, mm -hmm. the and there will be a public conversation yeah. after the panel, Correct. so there's time oh, to ask questions, ask questions mm -hmm. of everybody. The director, yes. and, and yep. you know, she is not without some famousness. Too. Yes, I mean, yes, she's yes. <laughs> very, very she's accomplished. A, she's an accomplished sure. director yes. in New York, so mm -hmm. that'll be exciting to have that conversation. Yes. And uh, we love everything you're doing, so we appreciate thank you, thank you guys you, coming you. on. Anytime you want to come on and talk about what's thank next, you. let me know. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in today. Uh, we hope you have a great rest of the week. Stay warm this weekend. We'll be back next Thursday for another segment of What's Happening in Rhode Island.